So, now to cover a couple very basic math things that I'm sure you probably know. All right, to start with integers, I'm show, sure you know what those are, but just in case, those are whole numbers on the number line. I'm sure you know that num the number line goes into the negatives as well as in the, in the positive direction. So, seven, like negative seven or negative one million, those are both integers. Zero is also an integer. However, um, a uh, quarter, negative one quarter, one sixteenth, one eighth, none of those are integers. Okay, so basically whole numbers, what be they positive or negative, are integers. Um, good thing to know, I'm sure you know this. Negative numbers get smaller as they go down the number line. So that is, negative 1,000 is smaller than negative 100. Just, just like 1,000 is larger than 100, negative 1,000 is smaller than negative 100. All right, um, a couple things to know about zero. Zero is neither positive nor negative, as I'm sure you've realized. But do you know whether zero is even or odd? Well, it happens that zero is even, okay? But just remember, zero is even. So although the, the word odd has an O in it, which is like a zero, it's an O, not a zero. Okay, so it's actually even. I don't know if that will help you remember, but remember that zero is even. Um, and of course you know this, but I'm just going to remind you, zero multiplied by any number is zero. So zero times seven is zero, zero times negative seven is zero, and so on and so forth. You know what digits are? Just think of the numbers on your phone. Any of those numbers are digits, and I'm not thinking of the pound key. Okay, so... Um, this is a rule to remember, and it sounds kind of complex, but I'm going to use the exact phrasing that's in my Princeton GRE book, because these are words that you need to use, need to know, because you will hear them on the GRE, okay? So even though it's not something that you might hear in everyday speech, it's something that you want to get accustomed to, because on the day that you're taking the test, you want to be able to skip over all the lingo and just work with the math. So this is the rule. Any integer is even if its unit's digit is even. Any integer is odd if its unit's digit is odd. Okay, so you probably caught that. I'll read it again. Any integer is even if its unit's digit is even. Any integer is odd if its unit's digit is odd. All right, so now think of the number 1,112. Is it even or odd? All right, so what we need to do is look at the unit's digit, which is, of course, the two since the units digit is merely asking us to look at the one spot, which is the two, right? And that would be even. The two is even, so therefore it's an even number. The whole integer, which is 1,112, is even. Okay, so how about the number 13? Is it even or odd? Well, again, any integer is odd if its units digit is odd. So we need to look at the three, right? Because that's the units digit. Three is in odd number. So that means that the whole integer, which means the whole number, 13, is an odd number. So there you go. It's pretty simple, but it's a good rule to remember. Okay, and this actually combines with the last rule that we're going to cover, which are prime numbers. And believe me, okay, I'm not going to use the expression that I want to use because it's a little bit sexual, probably inappropriate, but let's just say that the people in the testing center who work with math love, love, love prime numbers. Okay, you will find them on the GRE math section. They are effusive, they adore them, they're infatuated with them, they love them. They have dreams that are sexual in nature about prime numbers. Do you follow me? Okay, they love prime numbers. Um, so, know what a prime number is. A prime number is a number that is only divisible by itself and by one. Okay, so a couple basic rules about prime numbers. Zero and one are not prime numbers. Okay, so zero, you can understand. Zero is not divisible by one, right? Because you divide zero by one, you get like an indefinable number. Okay, one, you can kind of argue, well, one is dividable by, divisible by itself and one, right? I don't know. Ask my dad. He's a physicist but it's not, it's none, nonetheless, it's not a prime number, okay? 
and this one is really easy to figure out on your own. 2 is the only even prime number, which is kind of obvious because any other prime number larger than 2 would be also divisible by 2. So say 12. 12 is obviously divisible by 12, 2 as well as by itself and 1, right? And this relates to this rule. There are no negative prime numbers, okay? Um, because any negative prime number could also be divisible by, say, negative 1. Um, okay, so this is a question that I could see you seeing. So what if there was a question that say said, like, which of these numbers are prime numbers? Okay, well, you could look at them, and you could say, are any of these divisible by 2? And you could use the former rule, is any integer, any integer is even, if its unit's digit is even to find out if any of them are divisible by 2. And if any of them were divisible by 2, you would be able to automatically say, well, this is divisible by 2, therefore, it is not a prime number, right? And the same, you would be able to do the same thing if any of them were negative, all right? So those are a couple things to know that can actually make your GRD experience in math much more simple. All right, again, my name's Alicia. Um, I hope this was helpful. And Hope you have a great day. You can look at my website for a little bit more if you want, grechicks.com, and have a great day. Goodbye.